let's take a look at my emulation setup. I've been doing retro game emulation for a very long time. Uh, since probably about 1999 I've been doing it, back in the days of Nesticle and ZSNES. And uh, a lot has changed since then, so I was really happy to see just how far things really have come. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in my history of emulation. But let me show you my setup. Right now you're seeing one of my two screens. Now I do have a powerful gaming PC, you don't really need that for emulation, but I also do play modern games with it, so it's important to note that you don't need a screen of this high resolution, you know, uh, even even a 720p screen, or even if you have like a laptop and you have a low graph monitor. Um, in fact, for emulation, uh, an old CRT monitor is probably better for your purposes than a fancy LCD monitor. So I'm not going to talk too much about the specs of my PC, it's a Windows 10 PC, it has a powerful video card, it has a powerful processor, but for retro gaming you don't really need all that. As long as you have, at the very least, um, what, 2 gig RAM, you know, you're fine. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. I do emulate PS2, which is probably the most advanced that it gets, and even with the PS2 stuff, you can emulate that on even a, an older generation of, of PC, so it's not really anything to worry about too much. As long as you have a graphics card, you're good. If you have integrated graphics, you're going to have trouble with anything 3D, PlayStation or above, you're going to have some trouble. So just bear that in mind if you're going to build a computer for the purpose of emulation. Now I use LaunchBox as my front end for emulation. LaunchBox is an excellent, excellent program. Uh, you were seeing on my screen, just so that in case you're wondering, you're seeing uh, Jay White Switchblade from New Japan Pro Wrestling. I am a pro wrestling fan, uh, just so that you're, you know, in case you are curious about that. Now you're going to see here LaunchBox. This is the regular basic interface that you're going to see with LaunchBox. As you can see, you can look by platform. You can also hit these drop downs and look at specific playlists, specific publishers. So there are all kinds of different ways that you can look at the games that you have in your system. As far as sourcing games, I'm not going to advise you about sourcing games. Uh, you're going to have to find that out on your own. Now as far as sorting the games, you can arrange them by a number of different categories, which I really like about LaunchBox. So let's say I wanted to play a Nintendo game, but I'm not really sure what I would like to play. I would kind of like to play, for example, an action game. So I sort by genre, and all the action games for Nintendo were sorted here. There's really not too, too much to the interface, but I would like to just show one of the nifty things about it. Is that it will play the music. You can hear that. It will play the music from the game that you've selected as long as you've, as you've downloaded the correct files for that. And of course there are screenshots that will play that will uh, display here. It's not perfect, it is a little bit buggy. Sometimes you get multiples of the same picture or screenshot. Sometimes the wrong screenshots will be for a game just because of the way that the databases are downloaded. But it's just something that I mean, I'm used to, I, I don't have a high expectation that everything's going to be picture perfect with this system. You know, it is handling a lot of data and it's doing its best to sort it. And it's light years ahead of anything I used to have before. You know, if we want to go back to when I started doing this kind of thing, I was dealing with no UI at all. And you would just have to go browse through Windows Explorer to find the file you want and play your game. So this is a huge improvement over that. Tonight I am drinking Stone Arrogant Bastard. Now, I'm not sponsored by Stone Brewery, but I wouldn't mind. But this is just a fantastic beer. So if you are a beer drinker, if you are a uh, craft brew drinker, this is highly recommended. It's got some real bite to it. It's a sipping beer. It's not a chugging beer. I'll tell you that much. I mean, I think I've shown pretty much all there is really to show you with uh, LaunchBox so far. It gives you a little bit of information about each game, which you download from the LaunchBox database. But now I'm going to show you the really cool thing. Now, when I'm using my desktop, 
I generally stick to just this general interface that they that they have. But but when I'm using my TV in the living room, and I'll tell you a bit more about that, I switch to big box mode. I'm gonna show you big box mode. This is gonna blow your mind. Big box mode is awesome. It takes a second to load. And this is custom. I downloaded this specific splash screen. And you can download a splash screen or you can even make your own. You could have whatever you want there. So you can download one or you can make your own. Now, there might be some flicker with this just because of the refresh rate and the way that the video is captured. Uh, also, right now, I am capturing this using Shadow Play. Now, I don't normally capture with Shadow Play. I usually capture with OBS, but because I'm doing the camera, I'm doing this a little bit differently. I'm doing a much quicker solution. My gameplay footage is normally captured in OBS, and my on-camera footage is also captured in OBS normally. I'm just going to show you a little bit. Big box mode is really great. This is what I use on my TV. If you were to build yourself an emulation console or arcade cabinet, this is probably the way you'd want to go. I am planning to build a RetroPie setup. And when I do, this is absolutely the way I'm going to go. So you see I can flip through the different, different uh, platforms here. Now let's go into one. We're going to the, the NES because I know that uh, a lot of... I can tell by my views of my videos that there are a lot of NES fans out there, and I'm with you, I love the NES, it's fantastic. And before I hop in there, just so you know, this layout is custom, I downloaded this as a specific theme. You can download a lot of different themes and apply whatever theme you want, you can create your own theme, it's very, very versatile. I just really like this with the arcade background and the cabinet showing the gameplay footage. And uh, these are the platform videos you can download from Launchbox as well, and you can also download or create your own platform videos if you would like. And here, using the big box, you can see that I have a little video playing with some uh, some gameplay, which is another really, really fantastic feature of big box. And you can change this up. You can display it in different ways. You can display it with the video in the background. It all depends on your theme, but you can change it up however you want. There's multiple ways to, to display this information. I don't think I have, I don't think I have a video for every game. There aren't always videos for every game, so... But this is really great, especially if you have like an emulation console uh, where you can flip through the games on a controller, you know, on the couch, and a little demo will play. So if you're playing something that maybe you're not too sure if you feel like playing it, you can watch the video. If you have guests or somebody in the house that doesn't know the games as well, they can take a look. Like my wife isn't really a gamer, so this is awesome for her because she can flip through and see if a game is something she'd be interested in playing. So I'm going to back out of this for now. I hope there wasn't too much of a flicker there. I'm going to show you a little bit more about it, though. And beg your, beg your pardon while I'm making mouth noises there. I'm going to have to a little dry here. The hoppy beer is probably not helping. So I'll open up launch box again. And what you can do on LaunchBox is you can manage your emulators. So you'll see here there's a list of different emulators that I currently have installed on my computer. I mainly use RetroArch. I use RetroArch for just about everything. There are very few games on my PC that I don't use RetroArch for. Uh, if there's not a RetroArch core available for something, I'll use something else, but I generally use RetroArch. Uh, PCSX2 for the PlayStation 2 games because it's really the only emulator I've come across that is halfway decent. A lot of games do require a lot of tinkering and some stuff just doesn't run well. But short of, you know, short of cooking up a PS2 to my TV, I actually do have a PS2. But, you know, to mod it so that I could use all these games that I have with it would be really tricky. Uh, I no longer have the original discs. Unfortunately, these are all copies, so... I wish I had the original discs still, but... I did purchase them at one point. I used to have a massive collection of physical games. Alright, so you can see here uh, 3DO Play is an alternate 3DO emulator. I use that if LaunchBox is giving me a problem. Same thing, Dolphin for Wii, you know, these are all alternates. I use, I use RetroArch for pretty much everything with the exception of PS2 and Dreamcast. 
for Dreamcast, I use ReDream, uh, which is the best Dreamcast emulator out there. Uh, you do have to purchase a license in order to use it, but I strongly recommend purchasing that license because it is absolutely worth it if you want to emulate Dreamcast. So now, with all that being said, I want to show you real quick just a little bit about those emulators. So let's take a game. Uh, let's see, what's a game that, that I can show you that I have? I have... Here you go, I have Contra. Let me show you. So when I open up Contra, this is going to open up in RetroArch. Gives you a nice little splash screen. And I have an overlay here that looks a little bit like a Nintendo, and you can actually customize that overlay. Here's the RetroArch menu, and you can customize the overlay. There's, you, know, you can download all kinds of overlays that you can show. I like to show my overlay on my game footage. Now I have this made for me uh, through Fiverr, so if you need any kind of anything made like this, Fiverr is an awesome place to get that made. I, I highly recommend. And it plays very well. Um, I'm using the Misen core for this. When I say core, RetroArch is really cool in that way. So RetroArch is not an emulator. RetroArch is a front end, which means that you're not actually playing the game in RetroArch. You're playing the game in, in this case, Misen. Misen being the emulator core that I'm running. All that RetroArch does is kind of sort those out for you. So Misen is my default core for running Nintendo games. And I'm running it in RGB video, which you know, requires no hardware modification because I'm emulating it. I'm not supposed to pay that much attention to what I'm doing in the game here. It looks great, it sounds great, it plays beautifully. Um, there is some flicker, there's probably going to be some flicker on the video, unfortunately. Um, I'll try to edit it out the best I can, but... It's just an unfortunate thing, Shadow Play does not play well with RetroArch, and, and there's a lot of flicker on screen, so... Hopefully the, the flicker won't be too bad. When I record in OBS, I don't get that flicker, so... You know, it's not it's not RetroArch's fault. It's something about RetroArch and Shadow Play not, not playing nicely together. And then, of course, now I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and quit the game. Just wanted to show you real quick what that looks like. And I know I said before that Dreamcast and PS2 I used different emulators for, so I'll show you a little bit of that. Sega Master System down here. Here we go, Dreamcast. So let's just, I'll show you something in Dreamcast. I'll show you a game that I, that I own in Dream, on Dreamcast. This is running in Redream. Dreamcast was the console for fighting games. I'm looking forward to doing a, uh, to doing a, a Dreamcast deep dive at some point in the future. This is actually too loud in my ear right now. I'm looking forward to doing doing a deep dive into the Dreamcast in the future. But this looks beautiful, it plays beautifully. It's an excellent, excellent emulator, so if you want to play... If you want to play Dreamcast, this is this is the way to do it. I'm going to play Capcom version. This is another game I want to do, do, a, uh, do a video on at some point, because it's a fantastic game, fantastic series. Gotta do some Capcom Terry real quick here. I don't really do the Let's Play thing. Um, if that's something that you guys would be interested in seeing, let me know in the comments because, you know, I'm not fantastic at fighting games. I'm pretty good at RPGs, so if you want to see me play some RPGs, I mean, that could be pretty cool, I think. Buster Wolf! So I'm not fantastic at fighting games. I'm really good with RPGs. I was thinking because RPGs are kind of hard to cover with a format that I currently have. It takes a long time to get really deep into them, and I don't have a lot of time to play them. So I would like to do maybe a Let's Play with the RPGs and do like 30 minutes at a clip, or just do like, you know, one logical chunk of the game at a time. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. You know, if I do some RPG coverage, I'll play and I'll talk about the game while I'm playing. Um, and do like a let's play thing. Videos maybe about a half hour long or a little bit longer depending on how big that particular like logical chunk of the game is. Let me know what you think. Alright. I just want to show real quick what Redream looks like. Again, Redream is an excellent, excellent emulator. It sorts all your games for you. And you have input, video, and some system options. 
Um, here we go, RGB, that's better. Right? Yeah, RGB there. Yeah, and you have it set up the right way. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a 2560 by 1440. This is the best, the best I could find, but that's fine. You can ramp up the internal resolution, so it's good. Be a really excellent emulator there. And then I mentioned before, for PS2 emulation, really the best you're going to do on PS2 emulation is the uh, PCSX2. This, I think, is going to pop up yeah, right here. PCSX2 takes a lot of configuration in order to get right. So um, you can download most recent builds of PCSX2 with all the plugins already downloaded, installed, and configured. So I do recommend doing that if you're going to go the PS2 route. And if I take a PS2 game that I own, for example, Castlevania Limited Innocence, I'll just show you real quick what it looks like. And you'll see a little bit what I'm talking about, how the PlayStation 2 games can be pretty tricky to configure correctly. I haven't launched this in a while, so I can't promise you it's going to look good. We're gonna, I guess we're going to see. Or if it'll even load at all. And if there's flicker again, I apologize. Shadow play is just doesn't really play nice. <laughs> that was an excellent game, though. Yeah, I don't think I have any save files either. Oh, by the way, my name is Dan, in case you're wondering. I'm Danny. Danny's good. Daniel. We're going to create new save data here. Just to show you real quick what it looks like. And yes, I record all this video in my living room. <laughs> You can see behind me my wife's desk with her tchotchkes on it. And you can make this look smoother and nicer. Um, this isn't really configured right now. But the gameplay actually looks pretty good, I think. Look at Leon jumping around. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. I really can't complain. This, is, this looks a lot better than I thought it would. I don't think I have any save games with this because I know that I did finish this on an emulator not that long ago, but I've definitely made a lot of configuration changes since then. But yeah, this looks great. I'm really happy with how this is running and how it looks. Sprite-based games are a little more difficult to get right. But if you look at the textures, the textures all look really nice. I think they look a little nicer than they did on the original PS2, as a matter of fact. The cutscenes don't look good. But I think that's just something you have to deal with. The cutscenes are all pre-rendered, so you can't enhance them. Like right now, the internal resolution is jacked up. A lot of the settings are, you know, increased and improved from what the PS2 would see. It's using a lot of high-resolution textures that were not included in the PC version. It upscales everything. So it's just, you know, it's just... You can't really do much with the cutscenes. But yeah, I think, I think it looks really great. I'm not complaining. I've, like, forgotten how to play this. It's a great game, though. I know it's not a particularly popular game, but I think it's an excellent game. Well, that's it for that. And I think I've shown you really all there is to show you with my emulation setup, in case you were curious about it. I am using uh, a Logitech G933 wireless headset here, which is a beautiful headset, wonderful, fantastic sound, good microphone. So, uh, I highly recommend that. I play all my games with this. This is a Logitech F310 controller. There's also a wireless version, uh, which I do not recommend because it is 2.4 gigahertz and not Bluetooth. So it's kind of, I mean, if you really want a wireless controller and you're only using it on a PC, then that's fantastic. Go for it. But anything that wants a Bluetooth connection, it's not going to work. So I would go with the wired. This is an excellent controller. It has the look and feel of a PlayStation 4 controller, but it has the button layout or the button names, rather, of an Xbox 360 controller. And it can be used as direct input or X input. So in whatever the game you're playing calls for, you have a switch on the back you can flip for that. It's got your, your right and left shoulder buttons and triggers. It's very lightweight. It doesn't feel super duper uh, sturdy, but it's a fantastic controller. I've never had any kind of issue or problem with it. I definitely highly recommend that. And let me see, is there anything else around here that I want to recommend before I go ahead and, and cut the video out? I, well, you know what? I do have this. I don't know. Wait, what What y'all are going to think about this, but... 
I do have a fight stick. I have a microphone. I have a Quanba Q14 fight stick. I'll get that on camera so you can see a little bit better. Very, very shiny and reflective there. Um, I very rarely ever use this, not because it's not good, but because I'm terrible with this. I'm awful with it. I'd much rather use a, control a game pad for my fighting games. Which brings me to another recommendation that I have in my Drawer O controllers over here. This is the Hori Fight Commander. I definitely recommend this guy for your Street Fighter. Uh, other fighting games like Tekken or King of Fighters, you can play with a four button regular controller, no problem. But for Street Fighter, you want this guy because you've got your six buttons on the front. And of course, you've got your programmable trigger and shoulder buttons here. But this guy, this is your guy for fighting games, uh, especially for Street Fighter or any other game that has a weak, medium, strong punch and kick. This is your guy right here, the Hori Fighting Commander. That's your bread and butter right there. But I'm going to show you one more thing. This is another controller that I have. This guy. If you're if you're going budget, budget, budget. I'm talking about budget. This guy is your fighting is your fighting controller. This is based on the Xbox 360 controller. It is the PDP versus fighting pad. It is janky. It is light. It feels like it's going to fall apart in my hand. Actually, no, it, it's not that bad. I'm exaggerating, it's not that bad. It has, hear that, hear, that, hear that click? It has like a little thumbstick here, instead of a D-pad, which is really nice for your Hadoukens and your Dragon Punches and stuff. But I have to say that if I'm tr if I'm gonna play with either this or the Hori, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick the Hori, like nine times out of 10. But this is nice if you're on a budget and that, that thumbstick is a lot nicer than a D-pad for your quarter circles and your half circles and stuff like that. I'm gonna show you one more controller. I have a drawer of controllers over here. I, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, don't sleep on the on the DualShock, but I use that for my PS4 anyway. Um, the OG. I'm gonna show you the OG. If you're going full retro and you don't need analog sticks, this guy is the OG right here and this is a beautiful beautiful controller let me tell you all about the Gravis PC gamepad if you can still find it because they're old and I don't think they make them anymore the Gravis PC gamepad right here pro USB there is a wireless version available I believe but yeah this has got everything you need it's got your shoulder buttons it's got got a pretty nice d-pad it's got your regular buttons if you're only doing like regular 2D games, it feels like a PlayStation controller. I've had this thing for like forever. I've probably had this controller for 20 years. It's an amazing controller for strictly retro gaming if you're not doing anything that requires 3D movement. If you're playing games that don't require analog sticks, this is this is your jam right here. All right, I think, I think we're probably about ready to wrap this up. Uh, maybe a couple more quick endorsements and again, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm not You know, I'm not advertising or shilling for anybody I'm just telling you what I use and you know, of course you can have your own preference. I will tell you one thing uh, from as a gamer I Used razor products for a while. I don't really use them anymore because I just had too many quality control problems So I kind of switched over to the Logitech stuff I have, I'm going to move this camera, I have a Logitech keyboard. I'll link to that in the description, I don't remember the model name right now. And I have a Logitech mouse also. And, and, and a Corsair mat, but... I'll link to those in the description in case you would like to get some good gear. I can tell you for sure definitely that I'm very pleased with both this keyboard and this mouse. Keyboard is mechanical, does what's on the tin, works for me. The mouse is an MMO mouse. It has a number pad on the side of the mouse, kind of like the Razer Naga. So if you want to play your World of Warcraft or whatever you're playing, that's a beautiful mouse to play with that. Um, and I really can't see my monitors in here, so I'm not going to really recommend them. Um, I have a pair of Klipsch speakers with subwoofer. Klipsch is definitely the brand I would go with if you're going to get desktop speakers. And uh, only other thing I can think about, I mean, this is just a cheap gaming chair from CyberPower PC. 
But yeah, if you want to get a, if you want to get a gaming PC, I would I can recommend CyberPower PC. Uh, they have mixed reviews. I know a lot of a lot of people will probably tell you stay away because they've had bad experiences. But I can tell you my experience was good with them. They built me the machine that I asked for. I didn't have to bother building it myself because I really didn't want to build another machine again. But that's a whole other story. If you want to hear all about my experience with gaming PCs, then let me know in the comments and I will make another video about that. That'll be a quick and dirty video that I'll be able to, you know, get out real quick, so. I think we're pretty, pretty much, I think I pretty much covered everything there is to cover as far as my emulation setup, at least for the time being. If you want to know more specifics or details, let me know and I'll, I'll do my best for you to try and get you those details and specifics about that. For now, I think we're in good shape, man. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you taking the time to look into my emulation setup with me. If you have any questions about where to download some of these, uh, you know, utilities, I'm going to put as much of that as I can in the description. I'll put some links to some of the products I mentioned in the description. This shirt, this Terry shirt, Busted Wolf, put that in the description for you. And I'll use affiliate links there, so if you click on those, I'll get, I'll get a few shillings. I'll get a few shekels, which I'll appreciate. Yeah, I think that's about all we got. So thank you for watching Risky Bitness. Look, if you enjoyed this, if you want to learn more about retro gaming or emulation, subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, turn on notifications. You know, the more you do that, it helps, helps me out. It helps grow the channel. And once this channel grows, I'll have more resources, I'll have more money, more time that I can spend researching games and systems for you and giving you more information. So once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, game over.